Hey guys, it's Alex and Patrick here with another video. Um, today I really wanted to talk to something or talk about something that deeply concerns me. Um, a year and two months ago, about a um, couple days in there, I tested a product called PCP Ammunition. And Patrick at the time was not a staff member of the firearm blog. No, no, I was uh, just helping out, taking some photos, enjoying some range time, that yeah, kind of good thing. Yeah, he was uh, doing, you know, having a good day at the range with me, helping me out as a friend. And um, <laughs> we were having a, a good time. We were shooting some some stuff. And then I said, oh, well, let's, let's test this and finish that up real quick. And he had brought uh, an FAL mm -hmm. and uh, I'd brought a PTR-91. Uh, so we thought... You know, these are two of the most popular 762 by right. 51 rifles yeah, ever. I mean, they're one of the most practice, prevalent ones out there. Ever made. Um, you know, the big, uh, the big four are going to be the AR-10, the M1A, of course, the G3 in variants, and then the FAL. Mm -hmm. um, so we brought two of those. And um, I posted that article on 3-25-2014. Um, so like I said, about a, about a year and two months ago, um, I had talked to this company at SHOT, uh, the SHOT show, a couple months prior or a month or so, I forget how much prior. Uh, but they said that they had tested that ammunition. You want to show them around here? We'll also yeah. overlay some um, macro footage as well. Um, you do want to know, uh, note that there is only two rounds missing. There's only two rounds missing from a box of 20 they sent me, which scares the hell out of me that they're even sitting around anymore. But the company said that they had tested it in countless firearms, including mini guns and belt-fed machine guns. And of course I thought, wow, that's awesome because it's light and it's really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. you know, it's yeah, a I mean, concept. for a 308 round, it's... So they said they had tested it in countless firearms, but never in a firearm with a fluted chamber. That, that struck me as odd yes. at the time because I'm thinking you developed a new revolutionary <laughs> type of ammunition and you didn't think, hey, let's test it in a fluted chamber. Being as how one of the most popular 308 battle rifles ever made has a fluted chamber. Mm -hmm. So I just thought that was strange. Um, still, as of 5-30-2015, which is today, it says not recommended in fluted chambers on their website. It doesn't say no fluted chambers still. Um, yeah, and as a public service announcement, Alex typed up a quick article uh, right after we got back from the range and informed all of our readers that uh, you shouldn't be firing in any rifle at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah. It, especially fluted chambered guns. I'm surprised they haven't changed that. Right. So I contacted them three days ago on 5 27 2015. Um, just called the number on their website. Someone answered the phone and I said, uh, I'm looking for PCP ammo. And they said they didn't hear PCP. So they go, Oh, are you looking for Gorilla Ammunition, PCP, or some other brand of ammo? So I said, PCP ammo, and he goes, oh, okay, what can I help you? And I go, well, are you still selling that? Can I, can I get some for, you know, I was curious. I was like, can I get some for shooting? And they go, no. no. They said they wanted to fulfill their military contracts before releasing more ammo to the public. I hope they sell it to our enemies. Yeah, I, no, realistically, guys, I would never slander a company like this, but no, they said on the phone they're focusing on military contracts. I have no way of verifying whether or not they have a military contract. They might. If anybody does have a way of verifying that, I'd love to know um, because it put me in danger. If you watch, look at the article, which I'll link to, if that floor plate would have gone through my forearm instead of into the right and, into uh, the table, which it embedded itself into the way it, it embedded a floor plate from this magazine so far into a wooden table through a range bag. I actually had to use a pair of pliers to remove it. It would have seriously hurt me. It would have seriously hurt Patrick if you were shooting too. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, I was almost taken up by the spring and uh, yeah. the follower. So after I had done the test, the company said they would send me a return uh, receipt for the ammo so they could see what was wrong with it. I thought, okay, great. At least, you know, there's something wrong with this lot. Right. They'll, they want to they investigate. Maybe, maybe they'll go ahead and, uh, you know, make right. Yeah. Seriously, looking so, at the issue. So, guess what happened? Well, obviously, I've still well, got the answer. Right. I mean, it's sitting here in front of us. You know, guys, I'm so steamed up about this. They, what does that show how much they cared about their customers if they didn't send me a return receipt? They have not really followed up since then, and they just... No. It's, um, still, it's still floating around out there. After the failure, I know that you reached out to them and uh, said, hey, we went I'd to the range. I even called Phil <clears> the <throat> editor, on the way home because I was so freaked out. Yeah, I recall that. I recall that. Uh, and, and everyone asked me, why did I duck under the table? And that's because I just was taking precautions because it's plastic ammo. I, thought, I mean, I thought this yes. is probably unnecessary, but one round. And then surely enough, after the first one, I was glad I did. After the second one, you bet, I was glad I did. Yeah, we were, we were hoping that, you know, that the note on the website was that... Um, you know, 
fluted chambers. Okay, we understand a failure there because the failure we had that time, the uh, the case actually, you know, broken into two pieces. That yeah. it, the failure on the foul this was is a, a rupture more case severe. that blew out all of that pressure right down the magazine and blew the floor plate, like we said, into a table to where we had to use pliers to remove the floor plate. Can you imagine the liability if someone got hurt that was so happy and really wanted to take everything no that these guys had? Well, and back to... But still, the fact that they did not send me a return receipt to investigate this product that could have hurt someone to that degree shows such a, a far-reaching amount of negligence that I would be hesitant to buy any ammunition, guerrilla ammunition, what have you, associated with this outfit. Um, and they've even got Gorilla on one side of their card and PCP on the other. But I'm going to tell you right now, with the experience I had with that amount, that level, or should I say lack of customer service, not getting these back to see what was wrong with them after that happened, I'm absolutely outraged. I've never yes. experienced that level of negligence in the firearm manufacturer side of well, things, ammunition manufacturer side of things. No. Um, and a little bit about it. They were selling these at $40 a box on their website. To have, um, so civilians could help them test the yes. ammo. Yes, um, and I mean, I, getting someone else to bankroll your test, you know, your uh, research and development is not okay. But I mean, absolutely it's... outrageous. And then the worst part, when they addressed my test that I posted, they said they're in their thing that it shot. They told me they had not tested it in a fluted chamber, but I can confirm at that shot meeting. I spoke with them briefly. They said they were excited that I would be doing it, and they did not tell me to not do it. In their little addressing of my test, they mention that they told me they had not tested it in a fluted chamber, but they completely failed to address why the FAL failed. Yes. Completely failed. Uh, <laughs> Even in the response to the they article. Were, they were cryptic, and they just basically said, it was almost like a slap in the face. They didn't explain, well, the FAL failed because... We hadn't tested it in an FAL. Oh, if you claim you've tested it in dozens of military rifles and stuff like that, and you didn't do an FAL, you're either lying or grossly negligent. And I'm sorry yeah. if this article sounds like I have a vendetta against them, but I'm just imagining what could have happened and how upset <clears throat> Phil and Steve both were when I contacted them about that. You know, I normally never call them unless it's uh, something like this, like an absolute emergency, but uh, on this time it was warranted. Um, absolutely. Um, and, and that's absolutely outrageous. And I just wanted to do this as a warning, as my scariest moment blogging, and also as a warning to watch out for this stuff. If you see some of it and you think, oh, that would be cool to shoot in my gun, don't do it. Maybe buy it as a curio, maybe sell it to an ammunition collector as everything ammunition should not be. But I'm going to tell you right now, the way that these guys handled it is the absolute worst possible way to do things. Right, and that's something I do want to expand on is whenever we did reach out to them and inform them of the failure, you know, the firearm blog did, uh, they offered to go ahead and compensate us for the destroyed magazine and the range bag, and that was the end of uh, what we heard out of them. So they sent us two, nothing further. two $50 Visa gift cards or something like yes, that. Yes, something that they re-gifted almost. And you know, I'm not the kind of scumbag guy that's going to go ahead and turn around and file a lawsuit because my range bag got hurt. But I, I, if I would've gotten hurt, you bet I would want them to cover my medical bills. I think that's fair. Yes, I mean, I mean if I got a floor taken, plate sent through my forearm, you're damn right I would wanna be compensated. Had we not taken the precautions we did that day, we would've been in a very different place at this point. Absolutely, and that's, you know, the thing I wanna drive home the most is that it just worries me that they didn't send me a return receipt and that that, you know, that level or lack thereof of customer service is, is unacceptable, especially when you're dealing with very dangerous things like firearms and ammunition. Right. Absolutely unacceptable. Um, guys, I, I don't know why I wanted to air this, this grievance. Maybe it's just because I saw this when I was cleaning up around the house the other day. But it's just something I think needed to be said, and I'm, maybe it's been stewing. But, you know, you give yourself some time to cool off after you're mad. Right. Well, I ain't cooled off yet, and it's been a long time. No, I'm, I'm still pretty, uh, pretty pissed about it as well. Um, you know, I, I'm just blown away that they, really, based on air, all the evidence, I don't think they did any testing. You know, any, I don't, any extent, I don't want to go that far. Testing. They may have tested it. But the fact that they said they tested it in a ton of different firearms and they never right. shot it in an FL or a G3, come on, who are you, are you really going to do that? My feel for it 
is they probably tested in a AR-10 and a 308 bolt gun. Probably, yeah. Uh, that's my feel for it, and they didn't go any further than that. By the way, PCP ammo, if you're watching this, um, I will send you this ammo back if you send me a return receipt, and I'd really like to hear your response as to why you didn't the first time. Um, it seems like that would have been something prudent to do when you could have really seriously hurt someone testing your ammunition. Um, that's why I'm making this video, is um, I, I really want to see why there was such a bungled response to something like that. Um, and I think it's, it's fair that the community know this. So um, I guess the ball's in their court if they want to make a move. Pretty much, yeah. yeah.